Hey right bugs, it's Jay. Today a guide to resources and how light takes them to respawn. Data miners, aka invite, aka spicy, and help of Sean have gone through a bunch of stuff for me and they've delivered the goods. So I've got every important resource, over 25 of them in fact. Everything from burr to lint to pupa, you name it, I've got it. I'm gonna give you the resource timers. Do bear in mind devs sometimes change these though. So if any changes happen, check the pinned comments just to make sure nothing has. And a big shout out again to the boys for helping me out with this one. So let's go. Absolutely everything you need to know about resources respawning in Grounded. And don't forget to like if it's useful. Charcoal, one of the most important going. You need it to make your oven. You also need it for ash walls and much more. So this takes around 120 hours or five in-game days. An important resource, but maybe not till the very end. You need toenails to complete the game. But other than that, you won't need many unless you're trying to make a whole bunch of the different Mahalahuni swords. Right now, it's 168 hours and that's 7 in-game days. And just a quick reminder, these are all the locations that you'll be able to find some. Including on top of the stump, there's actually one that usually spawns just in the crevice around here. Keeping with the theme of the ingredients you need to complete the game, Koi Scales take 72 hours. And since we're here as well, you might not need lots of them, but bones also take the same amount of time. There's loads of berries absolutely everywhere, but just in case you've made a base up in the upper yard and you don't want to venture to the hedge, you can obviously get them at the two smaller bushes now. Well, these spawn every 48 hours, so that's two in-game days. Alongside berries, of course, you need gum to complete the game. It's 96 hours or four days. Of course, do remember you do get a quite significant amount of gum inside some of the chests that you get in the sandbox, the trench, and in some of the laboratories. The haze is also a good spot underneath the decking for guaranteed gum. And it normally always respawns in exactly the same spot. While we're here near the sandbox, chests, as I mentioned, they have around 48 hours, so that's obviously two days, but they've got a 50% chance of spawning. So sometimes they might not spawn, sometimes they will. If a chest doesn't spawn, it's always candy instead by the looks of things. So what about actual foods and candies? Well, food like apples, donuts, and cookies, they spawn daily at 4am and then they despawn at 5pm in the evenings. Any candy you find in a container like the mint caps or the sour worms, they will never respawn once you've gathered them inside. This also applies to the candies I do believe you find in the cup on side the deck too. This has been a tricky one to find because like I said they sometimes replace chests but then you've got certain spots where it's always only ever candy. So elemental candies that stay in the same spot, 24 hours or one day. The buried candies, again, they swap places with the chest. They can take 48 hours and it's a 50% chance if you get candy or a chest. Feathers are a bit more difficult. It's got only a 25% chance every time you see the actual crow land. And then it's flight path, basically the direction line it goes over, it's also got a 25% chance to drop. So it's a bit more of a, yeah, you just got to follow the crow and go to certain places like the haze trenches. Likewise, the picnic table, again, has probably got a 25% chance of them spawning. We get more definitive answers, I'll pop it in the comment section in a pinned comment. Pupa, 120 hours or five days, and the most amount you get now is in the undershed. But it's still pretty difficult to get as it's the sinkhole. Lint is the same, 120 hours, 5 days, but you can get over 150 lint by tackling the undershed and going to all the different locations. That's a huge amount, meaning you'll never run out of lint once you've done a couple of runs of the undershed proper. There's plenty of fungus and mushrooms all around the yard, and of course once you investigate the haze, you shouldn't have to really run out, especially when you're killing all the creatures. But it does take 96 hours aka four days for them to respawn and again the same applies to any mushrooms that you find growing around the yard. Pop caps, of course the greatest concentration you'll find is by the fertilizer bag where you fight the first green shield bug as you go into the upper yard. These respawn every 72 hours aka every three days. Not the most necessary resource, the flares are pretty useless but there you go, making bomb arrows hopefully will get a bit easier once you find that sticky key. If you're looking to make a lot of stuff using pond moss, you might want to start getting that Black Widow Dagger straight away, as it takes 5 days, 120 hours for it to respawn. To be fair though, you shouldn't really run out, as long as you've gone to obviously the Molduk Pond, and you've also explored some of the waterways inside the upper yard sinkhole in the undershed, and of course near the stump you'll also find some. And apparently you get some out of the secret loot room that you get once you're about to start the Java Matic event. But you won't find any in the main central early pond near the oak tree. It's only in the upper pond. 
Sap takes 48 hours for them big massive dripping nodes to respawn to two days and if you're looking for just some single little drops it's usually 24 hours that you'll find on some of the smaller twigs. You can no longer place any of the sap catchers on some of the smaller twigs but you can place them on larger bits of wood or especially the big roots that you find. And unless they've patched it out you can also apply them to the ice box and collect sap that way but no longer to the turrets as they patched out a while ago. And while you're running around that oak tree, acorns take 48 hours or two days. But again, there's so much of it, it's probably going to be rare that you're going to run out unless you're building some really huge mega factory field of stuff that you need some of the oak pieces for. Rusty nails are 120 hours, aka five days. There's so many of these scattered around either the picnic table, parts of the yard, near the shed, near the decks, you really shouldn't run out. But of course, you can always go over to the tool chest it's absolutely everywhere anything metal go and take a look and i'm sure you'll find some if you're looking to get some of the red and eggs well first of all you need to go and kill a bunch of them if there's no eggs at all inside the red ant hill go and massacre a whole ton of them kill as many as you can then return 24 hours later and that's when you should start finding some now that should still apply to black ant eggs as well People feel like they're a myth and i've got to say i don't think i've ever come across one but the idea is that you kill a whole ton of them Wait close by and quickly run down to the bottom part of the Black Ant at Labs and see if you can find some. Pine cones, a whole ton of them in the upper yards, of course, that's where they are, not in the lower parts. 72 hours, aka 3 days. Slightly different from any of the other sort that you might find in other places, it's around 72 hours inside the caves. So remember, obviously you've got to kill the ant lions that guard the entrances, take their parts, and then you'll be able to go and investigate and get more of the salt. This means that actually salt is one of the most abundant elemental resources you can find in the game as it regularly respawns in exactly the same position in huge amounts. Rotten food spawns the same time as fresh at 4am but crucially it doesn't despawn so it'll just stay there until you go ahead and gather and harvest it. Burr of course doesn't respawn until you turn off the haze. Yes you can get 8 or 10 pieces in the pot and some out the secret loot room when doing the java mag. But you're not going to do much with that are you? As it's simply used for the floor pieces most. So you do need to turn off the haze and then it will respawn all the burr weed plants every 24 hours. Mussel sprouts which of course you find in the underwater laboratory inside the pond. Once you've completed the actual lab itself in the dome, they take actually five days to respawn. So make sure you always go back and get these. Little word on pollen. Pollen you get from the dandelion. You can also get it from the haster plant. Now the haster plants repetal, I think, every 72 hours, as do the dandelions. The orange ones are the ones that have got more chance of dropping pollen, and the white ones have got more chance of obviously dropping some of the gliders. Technically not a resource, but I'm throwing it in here anyway. Black Widows, they take seven days to respawn in the three spots around the yard. The only one that doesn't respawn is the one in the undershed laboratory in the sinkhole. And something really important, green scarabs, obviously, they take 72 hours in the upper yard, but only 48 hours in the undershed. Inside this pipe you can see with the quarter, yes it's not a penny jade, so sorry Americans I got your money wrong, this is where you usually find up to four, sometimes maybe even six, some of you guys have been reporting. So if you need shells, then come here every 48 hours. And that's pretty much it, just a reminder that the quartzite, the upgrade rocks do not respawn currently, so you can only get more of them once you've got the recipes from completing the laboratories and you're able to craft them using sap and bug parts. If there's any I've missed, do let me know. I haven't included things like clay or rocks or grass, of course, because I just feel like there's way too much of that around in the right spots. So you won't really need to know exactly how long it respawns. But yeah, if there's something I've missed, I'll pop it in that pinned comment. And any changes, like I said in the future, I'll update this video and you can read the pinned comment. Big shout out again. Thanks to Spicy and Sean. And I'll see you at Bags for more Grounded Guides soon. Bye-bye.